let's get to work on replacing the spark plugs and or ignition coils on our Chrysler Pentastar V6. This one's a 3.6 liter in a Pacifica, but this will cover many makes and models. First thing we have to do is remove the engine cover with a 10 millimeter socket here. There's just the two bolts in the front of the engine cover. And then in the back of the cover, there's two rubber ball detents that you just have to firmly pull against and they'll pop out of place. The next thing that we're gonna do is remove the secondary air box. So just loosen up the hose clamp that's connecting that bellows to the secondary piece there and pull that free. Then there's a, a bolt we need to remove on the left side there with a 10 millimeter socket. Before we can pull the secondary air box out, we need to remove the air temperature sensor and the wire support from it. To remove the air temperature sensor, you grab it, uh, rotate it counterclockwise, quarter turn, and then pull it out to remove it. Once those pieces are off, then you can wiggle the air, secondary air box free. With that out of the way, now you do have access to cylinders one, three, and five. And in fact, you can even do this without removing that secondary air box. But for filming, uh, removing that helped me get this camera angle here. To remove the coil, the first thing you have to do is remove the wire connector that's supplying power to the coil. Um, you can pop that free. Then you need to remove the retaining bolt on the back side of the coil. Once that's free, you can kind of work it and rotate it a little bit uh, to free it from the spark plug and the valve cover, and then it should pull straight off and pop out of place. Now that our coil is out of the way, we've got access to our spark plug, and it's down in a recess in the valve cover there, and a 5 8 of an inch spark plug socket fits perfectly down there, and so you can drop that down in the hole and then get a 3 8 extension on that uh, once it's down in place. Getting the length of the extension correct is a bit tricky. It has to be long enough where it reaches to the bottom of the recess, but not too long where you can't snake it into place there. But once you get the right one, uh, it's not too bad. Loosen it up and then you can uh, unscrew it with your fingers. Then getting it out of place here is a bit tricky too. You can't just pull it straight out. So you got to kind of hold the spark plug socket with your fingers while you take the extension off. And then you can uh, remove it along with the spark plug there. Now you're ready to install your new spark plugs for cylinders one, three, and five. First thing you should do is check the gap. Rarely, if ever, do I have to make a change on this, but it's worth checking. Next, put a little ASCs on the threads uh, to prevent them from getting stuck into the head and easier removal into the future. Uh, then you can put it in your spark plug socket and try to connect that extension before dropping it down in the recess so you don't drop it and it hits the electrode and changes the gap on you. So you want to try to connect the two and then lower it down in there slowly. Then always, always start your spark plug by hand before putting a ratchet or anything on there so you don't cross thread it. Make sure it's uh, going into the threads nice and easily. And you can torque to 13 foot pounds. Do not over tighten these. Now we're ready to put in the new coils. I put a dab of dielectric grease on here uh, to prevent sticking to the spark plug in the future for easy removal. However, in the actual manual, it says not to do this. Um, some silicone in dielectric greases can be absorbed by the rubber material and cause the tearing of that material in the future. So it's up to you. I used it, um, but know that officially you're not supposed to. Then you put the retaining bolt in, snug that up, and then pop on your wire connector on the front, and you are complete on your spark plug and coil replacement for cylinders one, three, and five. Here's just a this is just a time lapse of completing cylinders one and three to complete the change out of coils and plugs on the odd number cylinder bank. I've separated out the even number cylinder bank, cylinders two, four, and six, because unfortunately they're significantly more complicated. We need to remove the intake plenum to access these. 
You would think it might be easier because they're on the front side of the engine, but unfortunately in this case, it's actually harder. So we're going to start by pulling off the ancillaries. These wire supports can be a bit of a pain. You have to pry them. Uh, what works even better than a, a flat blade screwdriver is a fork. And these hard plastic hoses, I actually removed them wrong here. You just press in that colored piece and pull off while you're pressing that down in instead of prying it up. On the front of the engine here, we have to remove a couple different support bolts on the AC piping, and we can see a 10 millimeter socket or wrench will free those up. Next, we can loosen up the actual retaining bolts for the intake plenum itself with an eight millimeter socket. And there's three on the top. Then we'll go to a different camera view and show the rest of the bolts. They are captured, so you don't have to worry about pulling them out completely. Um, you can see on the back side there, there's another five. Uh, remove those. And to help, you can remove this part of the fresh air intake. Before we can pull out the plenum, there's more wiring on the throttle body side here and connectors to remove. We also have to take the EGR valve off here, just a few, three nuts on that side and that kind of pulls out of place you don't have to take it completely out of the vehicle you can just leave it loose off to the side here's a hidden bracket down on the right hand side of the intake plenum connecting it to the block so you got to remove a nut and a bolt there once that is off your intake plenum is free and you can kind of snake it out of place here i'm just using my right hand there to free up that bracket and get it off that stud and once that's there now you've got access to cylinders two four and six and the coils and plugs and now they are very easy to work on and accessible so just time lapse here pulling those ignition coils and plugs out there and then repeating the process for installing new plugs and then in this case i did you reuse the coils um, the main goal here was just a spark plug change so we've successfully replaced the spark plugs and unfortunately you need to do this if you've got coils um, the most common cause of a misfire a single cylinder misfire in these engines is a ignition coil that goes bad so the good news is it's a relatively easy fix of just replacing that ignition coil. If it's on cylinders one, three, or five, pretty short deal there uh, on replacing. Unfortunately, if it's on the even number cylinders there where you got to remove the intake plenum, it's a bit more work. So if you get quoted for that particular job, now you've got a better understanding of why that could be. So you could ask that question, hey, is this... Um, on the even number cylinder bank or the odd, and then it should affect the labor hours that are being charged to replace that. I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. Even if you're not gonna do this work on your own, it does give you an understanding of what it takes uh, to do spark plugs and coils on your Pentastar V6. Thanks for watching, adios.